the bag would keep you alive for a few hours but beyond that the expectation is you risk death and almost certainly frostbite hello folks welcome back to the camping astronomer channel uh, it's getting a bit cold now we're in October so the nights are getting chilly and there's nothing worse than waking up in your tent at about 1am shivering and freezing cold knowing that you've still got about five hours to go before you can get up so today I thought I'd do a little video on understanding the temperature ratings of sleeping bags and uh, give you a few hints and tips as to how to keep warm and get a good night's sleep my name's John I make videos on camping, astronomy and walking for my YouTube channel The Camping Astronomer. If you enjoy today's video then please check my channel out, you might find something that interests you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with today's video. Many years ago when I started camping and wild camping, uh, the situation regarding sleeping bags was somewhat confused. There was no international standard and manufacturers would refer to bags by season so one season two season and such like and they'd often have a manufacturer's recommended temperature rating and the problem with this is that one person's definition of a four season bag is not necessarily the same as another person uh, so if you live in the south of england like i do a four season bag only needs to go down to say minus five degrees for example whereas if you live in Scotland a four season bag probably needs to go nearer to minus 15 degrees so the season rating is uh, firstly somewhat subjective and secondly dependent on where you live in addition to this the manufacturers would give a, a suggested temperature limit a lower temperature limit and there was no real standardization as to how tests were carried out so in 2002 a european norm was created for european sleeping bag manufacturers that was a testing protocol that enabled consumers to compare one manufacturer's bag directly with another on the same basis in i think 2017 it was taken over by the International Standards Organization or ISO uh, and basically became a worldwide standard at that point bringing in manufacturers from other parts of the world. So the European norm or the EN tests and the uh, International Standard Organization tests, ISO tests, fundamentally are the same thing and they produce comparable results so it's perfectly okay to compare a bag that has been put in for the ISO test against a bag, maybe an older model, that's been put in against the European EN norm tests. The results are fundamentally the same. Basically what the tests do is they take a mannequin, uh, uh, they heat it up, and they put it inside the sleeping bag along with a whole load of temperature sensors put the whole thing into a temperature controlled chamber, reduce the temperature in that chamber and look to see how fast the mannequin loses its heat. And the results aim to come up with four temperatures. One is a, a maximum usable temperature of the sleeping bag. One is a comfort temperature for the sleeping bag. One is a lower comfort limit and one is an extreme limit. And we'll go through uh, what each of those does and look at a sleeping bag to um, see how it's displayed and how you can understand those settings. The mannequins that are used in the test are dressed in one full base layer. So they're dressed wearing a, a thermal top and bottoms. Mm. And also it's assumed that they're wearing uh, knee high socks and that they're sleeping on a insulating mat. So the figures that come out of the test assume all of these things, plus the fact that you're sleeping inside a tent. If you're in a bivy bag, I know from personal experience, that's a heck of a lot colder than uh, being in a tent. You should allow something like a 
probably five degree difference between being in a bivy bag and being in a tent. The dummies that are used in this test are supposed to represent a standard man and a standard woman. And a standard man is 25 years old, five foot eight in height, and weighs 160 pounds. A standard woman is 25 years old, five foot three, and weighs 135 pound. So I guess they had to come up with some sort of standard value, uh, but of course many people, including me, don't fit that particular um, norm. It's worth noting that there's no legal obligation for manufacturers to submit their bags for these testing. Uh, equally, some bags aren't covered by the tests. Uh, children's bags, for example, aren't covered and expedition type bags with I think more than 800 grams of down, some, something like that, also don't fall under the scope of the testing. So what we'll do now then is a um, explanation of the temperature ratings that the tests give you. Now the information that you need is typically on the stuff sack and also Usually it's marked on the bag somewhere, often towards the top. And we can see it here. Now it's worth noting here that the upper temperature limit isn't actually shown on either the bag or the stuff sack itself it simply covers comfort limit and extreme and that's really uh, common amongst bag manufacturers the upper limit is deemed less important that's why it's not often listed and what this actually represents is the temperature at which you the standard man would start to sweat uncomfortably inside the bag it assumes that the man has uh, his arms out of the bag and that the hood and top of the bag here are left relatively loose and typically if you want a feeling for what the maximum temperature rating is uh, it's usually something like 15 degrees above the, the comfort value that's quoted and of course if you've got a bag that's too warm you can always unzip it and use it as a quilt or stick your feet out and so that's, I think, the reason why that commonly they don't actually publish that upper value. Looking at the next value down then, which is the comfort value, for this bag it's shown as minus one degree C. And this is the temperature at which the test suggests that the standard woman will get a decent night's sleep in comfort without waking for eight hours. Now women theoretically sleep colder than men and the limit value shown here, sometimes it's called the comfort limit value on bags, is the temperature at which they reckon a standard man will get eight hours sleep but in a curled up position, not a particularly comfortable position, a heat retaining position. The extreme number here is a number that really uh, you should stay well away from. And this is the point at which the bag will give you maybe five, six hours protection against extreme cold, during which you're not particularly likely to die of hypothermia. Uh, you go anywhere near this or anywhere below it, though it's worth bearing in mind that you do risk hypothermia, potential death, and almost certainly frostbite. So what you need to do really is to look in this range here between the comfort value and the limit value. So I'll go into how you can interpret these figures in a moment. Um, but what they do enable you to do is to make an accurate, accurate comparison between one bag and another. So this bag here, which has a comfort value of minus one, I could purchase any other bag with a comfort value of minus one and know it will perform in a similar way. 
and that's useful when you're looking at reducing the weight of your kit for example this is a really heavy bag it's a synthetic one so it takes up a lot of space and it's heavy I could look at a bag a down bag and in fact I've got a down bag rated at minus one and knowing that it would behave in exactly the same way but I've gained the benefit of a lot less weight and a lot less bulk so that's the advantage of this system here but you have to take the figures with a little bit of a pinch of salt and a bit of your own practical experience and that's what we'll come to next the first thing is looking at what we can see on the bag here we've got a suggestion here that this bag is suitable for minus seven degrees and indeed it is that's the lower comfort limit that is uh, marked and on the bag as a result of the testing so the manufacturers in their internet blurb on particular models of sleeping bag will commonly state that their bag is suitable down to temperatures of x degrees centigrade and what they're referring to there is the comfort limit value nine times out of ten and this is something that you have to be aware of because unless you fit the standard model that they've used to uh, carry out these tests you may find that that value is in fact too low to give you a comfortable night's sleep and in order to make a judgment on that you need a little bit of practical experience trial and error out in the field but also you can look at your own body type and how you sleep and make some sort of judgment on that and what we'll do is um, we'll use me as an example to give you an idea of how you can start making these sorts of judgments and where you fit on the temperature scale that's shown on that bag. If you're a hot sleeper, maybe you'll take that um, comfort limit value and you might decide to stick to that. For me, I'm kind of neither particularly hot nor particularly cold sleeper, so I've immediately knocked a couple of degrees off, off the back of that. So now what we're gonna do is compare me to the standard man that's used in the modelling. Well, the standard man is 25 years old, weighs 160 pound and is five foot eight. I'm almost 57 years old. I weigh about 140 pound and I'm around five foot nine. So I don't meet the standard man criteria at the moment and what this means for me because my weight is somewhat less it's halfway in between a, a man and a woman basically again I'm going to chop a little bit off the rating in order to take account of my uh, lower mass my leaner build in addition to this because I'm quite of a, a slender build there's more space inside my bag this means that there's a greater airspace that I have to heat up. So that's going to knock a little bit more off once again. Then I look at how I like to sleep. And unless it's bitterly cold, I don't tend to have all my hood and everything all fully tied up. I like a little bit of space to move. I like to stick my arm out every now and again. So once again, that's going to reduce the lower comfort limit by a little bit also. So you tend to find from knowing myself and knowing how I like to sleep and whether I'm a hot sleeper or a cold sleeper or somewhere in the middle, I can start to make judgments as to how this bag's actually gonna perform for me. And I know from this bag that it has a female comfort value of minus one degree and a male limit value of minus seven degrees. I know from my personal experience of having used the bag in the field that typically for me this bag is good for something like one degree so I'm actually taking the ladies comfort value and adding a couple of degrees onto that. So hopefully by using me as an example, I've given you a sort of route plan through which you can use your own body type and sleep patterns 
and interpret the standardised tests in order to come up with ideas for how a particular bag will work for you. In the absence of any other information, mind you, I would suggest that what you should do is to look at the comfort value and maybe add a few degrees onto that. The chances are that that will be okay for you. Uh, it's much better to have a bag that's slightly too warm than one that's slightly too cold. At least you can just stick your feet out if the bag is a little bit warm for the conditions that you're in. It's also worth knowing really how a sleeping bag works because there's a few little tips to um, make the bag work optimally for you. Uh, and what a sleeping bag basically does is it takes the body heat that you're giving off and traps it, prevents it getting to the outside world. What this means is that you don't really want to be getting into a sleeping bag cold. If you're shivering outside and you get into your sleeping bag, it's going to take forever for that bag to warm up. So what you need to do is to get into the sleeping bag, ideally slightly hot. And one way that you can do this is by, before you get into your, your tent and sleeping bag, uh, running on the spot a little bit outside your tent, doing star jumps for a minute, anything just to get your heart rate up and your body temperature up and then get straight into the bag. Uh, equally, it's a real good idea to have a hot meal in the evening when you're out camping and it's a good idea to have a hot drink before you go to bed because all of these things are going to help you when you get in your sleeping bag. Next week I'm off camping, uh, it's going to be mid-October by then, I've looked at the weather, I'm expecting the temperature to be something like 5 or 6 degrees at night, it will be a little bit colder than that, I'll be at maybe 750-800 feet, that's going to knock a couple of degrees off the air temperature, so I'm going to be taking this North Face bag with me uh, that nominally does minus one comfort, and I'm expecting maybe to get four degrees and I'm sure the bag will be fine for those sorts of conditions. So I hope this video has helped you understand how the temperature ratings work for sleeping bags, how to interpret them and how to apply them to yourself so that you get a good night's sleep while you're out camping. Thanks very much. Well, I hope you found that video uh, enjoyable. Uh, if you did, it would be great if you could press the like button and maybe make some comments about what you did or didn't like in the comments section below. Uh, if you did enjoy it, though, uh, maybe have a look at the other videos on my channel as you may find something of interest to you there. And if so, it would be absolutely fantastic if you could subscribe. That would really help me out. Uh, but in the meantime, I wish you well and cheerio until next time.